Hi everybody, in this video we're going to continue with the uh, physics. So uh, let's get started. Let me see, physics 2D. So we talked about all these. We're going to start talking about the fixed point 2D. I actually didn't need to create an empty. We're going to add it to here. So the fixed joint 2D, what it is, it's pretty much what it implies here. It keeps two game objects or joints fixed to one another. So they stay together or fixed to a certain position. So let's say I duplicate this game object and I move it over and I'm also going to remove that cloud because, okay. So now we got these two ground game objects. I'm gonna remove remove one of this fixed joint uh, on one of the game objects and then I'm gonna add the rigid body. So I'm gonna add, let me rename these. So left, left ground and then right ground. So left ground, all it's gonna have is the rigid body, the box collider, and a fixed joint 2D. The left ground, or the, the right ground, is gonna have the box collider and the rigid body, and that's it. We're gonna drag the right ground onto the left ground, uh, fixed joint 2D, so onto the connected uh, rigid body section. Let me lower this real quick. We're gonna hit play. Okay, so we're not gonna hit play. What we're gonna do is I have this player that I imported, so this player I got from the asset store as well. Uh, if you go to the asset store, it is called the 2D demo character sprite sheet by AOV or IOV. Sorry about that. The file size is 9.7 megabytes. Uh, the release date was uh, 2019. It is supported by Unity versions uh, 5.3.2 or higher. Then it has sprite sheet. Uh, PNGs. It has an idle, jump, run, sit down, sneaking, walk, death, and slide uh, animations. So check it out if you wanna if you wanna use this uh, 2D sprite or 2D character. So now this 2D character, I added a script that's player movement script. I also added a box collider. Well, two box colliders. The reason for that is that. I added two box colliders, one on top of his head and one on the bottom. So he could either hit the bottom of this or the bottom of this or the top of this ground. And then uh, the rigid body just for the gravity animator for his walking animations, his jumping animations and the sprite renderer to actually render the character or to show the character. So I'm gonna hit play now. So now as you can see the animations are working. He's idling he could run he could jump so now when i hit this since they're in a fixed position they both will move together as you can see that they're both moving together the the left and the right ground so if i have enable collisions these both will collide together if they ever touch each other now in uh, auto configure connected so if you want to automatically configure the connection you could have this checked if not you could uh, automatically adjust it yourself but make sure gizmos is on so you can see it so there's the the connected anchor and then there's the anchor now as you can see they don't have to actually be on the game objects but of course it will usually look more realistic if they are on the game objects also there's dampening ratio so it it dampens the the, the actual game object so right here it says for the oscillation width whilst trying to achieve the fixed co uh, constraint. Zero means no dampening, one means critical dampening. So there's freq frequency as well. Uh, this is just for the rotation. So when I jump on it, how frequent it rotates. So let, let's put two. And then I'm gonna show you break force and break torque and what that means. So I hit play. And as you can see, they're kind of wobbling around because of the frequency. So now if I move it, they're kind of, you can see the little wobbles and that's just because of the frequency that I added. So if I add more fre frequency, you should see more of a wobble. So as you can see, there's a hit bell here. Well, you don't see too much, but you still see that wobble. Now break force, this is if you want the actual uh, fixed joint to break. So break force, we could say a break force of one. And then this is how fast it should be for it to break. So either uh, the torque of it or the force of it to actually break this fixed joint. So if we go back, now they shouldn't see they actually broke already. So 
So if I move that one, it don't work. I move this one. See, they're, they're not connected. So if you don't want them to break as easily, you know, just set these to higher numbers. You would kind of have to play around with it depending on your player's mass, speed, all that. So you can see they still, they're still breaking. So maybe something like 5,000. So now you can see they're connected. Now if I hit it, they're still connected because I haven't applied the significant force. But like I said, just play around with it depending on the force that you need. So that's pretty much it for the fixed joint. Let's move on. Try to cover as much as we can for this physics 2D. So let's go physics 2D. Friction. Now friction is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that um, friction, friction it slows down uh, whatever collides with it. So, so if I collide with it, it's supposed to add some friction to it. And since they're connected, uh, you know, they act together. But if I have none, so as you can see, it has some sort of friction to it. So this one could kind of be useful for, um, let's say boxes. So if you want to be able to like push boxes around, you could have friction on it. Um, this also says, if you look at the documents, it also mentions down, it mentions that uh, the friction 2D reduces both the lin linear and angular velocities between the objects to zero. So it slows them down. So that's pretty much what the friction one does, it slows it down. Now, if we go to physics 2D and we go to hinge joint, now hinge joint acts as it applies like a hinge, like a door hinge. So let's bring these kind of together. And uh, to test this out, we're gonna bring this kind of like in the middle of both. Now this is gonna be our hinge. Now to to edit this, we could either click here to edit the, the actual, the hinges, but we would have to have these limits checked. So once we have these limits checked, you can see we could adjust it. So let's, let me show you what this is real quick. You could also have a connected rigid body and enable collisions for both of them. So when they hit each other, they'll collide with each other. So we're gonna adjust these. Now these are a bit tricky. The reason for that, I'll show you why. So what I usually do when I'm adjusting these these angles, these hinge joint uh, 2D angles is I'll hit play. And then of course I'll see some weird things going on. And then I'll go to my scene view. Now, when I hit edit, oh, I have to pause it. When I hit edit, you see this line right here? This is pretty much the line where it collides. So if this line, this little green line hits with this bar right here, or this green bar, then it will collide and it will stop moving. Same with up here, if it rotates and it hits this one, it will stop moving. So let's say I hit play, and as you can see, it's colliding with this one. So what I could do is I could bring this one all the way up, let's say right here, uh, maybe a little down. So let's say somewhere like that. Now it won't collide with that. So now what we could do is copy the component because once we hit play, these uh, numbers will reset. So once I hit play, as you can see, the numbers reset. So I'll hit the three little buttons again and go to paste component values. And there you go. I got my uh, component values pasted. So now we hit play. And as you can see, it still kind of acts funny. The reason for that is that we didn't correctly adjust it too well but you know just adjust it the best way you can we could adjust this for instance as well copying and then paste it now we could also use a motor so it would actually act as motor and rotate uh, depending on the speed so we'll add a speed of one just to show you guys what the motor does so when I hit play I go to my scene view I'm gonna hit, go to negative one actually I go ten I'm gonna disable uh, collisions real quick. Now, as you can see, it's actually rotating. So I could adjust it, negative 10, and it's rotating where this point is at. So if I set this, let's say somewhere towards the middle, it will rotate as well. So as you can see, it collides right here. So I was actually wrong. So what you gotta do, so it collides at this point. So what you would wanna do is you would wanna bring, this hinge joint is kinda tricky for me. Well, anyways, that's pretty much what that is. So you could have, let's say you hit play. Oh, it's probably because of the collisions. It's not supposed to snap like that. Um, let me move this more over here. Hit play. 
that's weird well I think about that let me show you another use for this so what you could also do is you could okay, I don't know why it's doing that now but you could set this let's say towards the middle uh, have no limits just set this to let's say 20 you can hit play and with this hinge joint you can also make um I don't know why isn't that working because uh, I got disconnected so make sure you have no connected rigid body and you know you can set this to like 200 2000 150 whatever you want and you could add this say like an obstacle so as you can see and the reason that it takes me just by the head is because if you remember I just had that box collider so I would have to add like some kind of mesh collider or I mean polygon polygon collider 2d as you can see that's an also another use for the hinge hinge joint 2d but the other use was an actual hinge like a door hinge that I was trying to show you Let's see if I can get it this time so if I hit play oh don't hit play so use motor use that connect it with your body connect it to that one hit play so as you can see it spins it's gonna keep spinning let me move, whoop, move this out the way so it can keep spinning as you can see it's just gonna keep spinning until it hits this little corner as you can see so like I was trying to explain, you could just adjust it while in play mode. So just to like, let's say right here, we only want it to spin. So now we'll put this negative 20 and we only want it to spin that far. So we'll adjust this to about there. So now let's see, let's see, let's see. So let's see what happens. We'll stop right there. And then, okay, we want it like this. Sorry guys, this is confusing. So we want it kind of like that. So it's gonna stop right there. And then we want it to go. That's why I do this during the play mode. Um, so we want it to stop right there. So we'll drag this down to about here. And we'll set this to, okay, so it's gonna stop right there. We want it to actually stop right here. And then we hit 20, so negative 20. Okay, I think we got it guys. So. Let's set a five or even ten. So now we could actually well we don't got enough force, but let's say we have our play room. Okay, so what you could do, go same, just adjust this. So you want the green part. The green part is the actual colliding part. So we'll have it like this. Hit play. It stops right there. But yeah, that's pretty much the hinge joint. You could um, set a certain angle. You could add a, a motor with the speed and maximum force of the motor. So it could spin. You could adjust these uh, little points and this will be the anchor point. So if you have it somewhere in the middle, it will rotate um, with the force in the middle. So it will start rotating kind of like a propeller. You could have this checked off. You could also use limits. So if you have just limits, sorry about that, let me put this to none, and play. So you can see it goes up, it can move down, I can push back up, but it has its limit, it don't go further than that, I can push it down, so it could act like a door, so it just goes as far as that collider lets it, but yeah, that's that hinge joint, and yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up, kind of mumbled a lot, and yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up. I think this is enough for this video you know I talked about this fixed joint a fixed joint just sets two game objects to a fixed position of each other so if one gets hit the other one moves with it friction joint it adds friction to the game object so if let's say your player hits it uh, it adds friction or it slows it down uh, the hinge joint acts like a door hinge so you could add a limit uh, let's say a limit of how far your door can open you can have like trap doors with this. You could also uh, use the hinge joint to add some sort of propeller using the motor. Uh, so right here, use motor. Uh, brake force, you could also break this hinge joint from uh, the connected rigid body. And you can have uh, the, the torque that it'll take for it to break. And if you set this, of course, to infinity, it will never break. So in the next videos, I will continue this talk on the physics 2D. So we'll continue with the um, with uh, what's it called uh, the platform effector 2D, which is 
something like Mario where you were able to jump from the bottom of the platform uh, but you then couldn't go back down so you wouldn't be so you wouldn't collide when you were jumping from the bottom to the top but you would collide when you were already on top of the the ground object there's point effector which uh kind of acts like a magnet if you could see it kind of like um sucks everything in sucks everything that you want it to be so i'll show you that i'll show you the polygon 2d and the rest of all these so stick tuned for that after this we're going to you know continue with the physics for 3d instead of 2d talk about the playables and rendering and all this so if you guys are liking this video so far if it's helped you out in any way please hit that like button i'll really appreciate it it will really help me out uh help me keep motivated also uh, if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as the video comes out once again thank you